Hey everybody, we're going to get started in about two minutes. All right, we're going to get started. So welcome everybody to the webinar today. Connectivity will be free. We're going to be sharing some insights from um, our most recent web scale uh, market landscape report. So before we jump in, I just want to do a few quick uh, housekeeping items. There at the bottom of your screens, there's a series of buttons from left to right. You can access the slides. There's audio controls, Q&A, uh, speaker bios, and there's a survey. Um, after the webinar, you're going to receive an email with the replay link, as well as a link to view and register for other TBR webinars. Um, if you have any questions, you can email those to webinars at tbri.com, and um, someone will get back to you. So uh, let's, let's get started here. Um, my name is Chris Antlitz. I'm a principal analyst in the telecom practice at TBR. Um, there's my email address. Feel free to email me if, if you want. Um, before we jump into the material, I just want to show everybody um, our syndicated research report portfolio for the telecom group. So we cover um, telecom vendors, the tier ones. Um, we cover telecom operators. And we also, in that middle column, we cover a variety of market topics. Um, ranging from 5G, NFBSDN, private cellular networks, edge computing, and web scale. And actually today, um, this is the report that we're going to be talking about today. Um, if you want to preface before we jump in, um, I had to condense down um, the, the content. There, there's a very large story that we want to tell here. Um, there's not enough time in, in the hour that we have today to tell the full story. So um, we're going to share as much as we can. Um, for those of you on the call that subscribe to that report, I would highly suggest looking at that for the rest of the story. Um, and again, we'll get through as much as we can today. So um, the, just bef before we start here, disclaimer, we're going to be discussing some very speculative and forward-looking content. Um, and this is, some of this stuff is very controversial. Um, but with that said, we do believe that aspects of what we're gonna be sharing today is going to happen this decade. Um, and I would argue, and we're gonna share some examples that some of the things we're gonna be talking about are already happening. So we're gonna go through all of that. So let's jump into the content here. Um, the race is on in the telecom industry to unlock and capture value in the 5G era. And the telcos are looking to leverage 5G in conjunction with edge computing, AI, and other technologies to participate in the estimated trillions of dollars in economic value that is gonna be created by those technologies. So the telcos are wanna be in point position to capture an out, outsized portion of that value. But there's a problem, and the problem for the telcos is that the competitive landscape is changing, and we have a new category of entrants coming in that are a very powerful entity um, coming into this space. Companies, um, we, we listed nine of them here. These are the nine that we think are going to take a disproportionate share of the value created um, in, in this 5G era. So um, we've been covering web scale disruption in the telecom ecosystem for years. We started um, when Google Fiber started, um, and we've been covering this topic ever since. Um, and what I've seen in that time span 
is web scales have been getting much bigger and bigger and bigger and encroaching more deeply across the ecosystem and coming into this telecom space. Um, but the question that gets asked is why would web scales want to become a network operator? So I want to leave everybody with some compelling, um, what I think is some compelling things to think about. Um, web scales have large growth targets that they need to hit and their existing businesses have a runway and they're starting to, to reach the final stages of that growth runway. They need to disrupt new large markets to continue growing. And what we see them doing is exactly that. They're moving into areas like healthcare, FinTech, um, and media entertainment in a much bigger way, um, gaming, and there's a, a list of other areas as well. Um, there's new technologies that are coming 5G AI and distributed computing um, are the three of the bigger ones. There's others. Um, these technologies, when they coalesce, are expected to um, generate trillions of dollars in, in economic value. So this is a big opportunity. Um, telecom is a unique opportunity for web scales because it can leverage their strengths and they can enable and capture some of this new value. So um, web scales have strength, existing strength, and when you pair that with a network, it enables them to capture that extra value. And this really comes down to data. The, the web scales do not want to own networks for the sake of owning networks and selling access. That is not what this is about. This is about data capture, new ways of monetizing data, new ways of leveraging data, breaking down silos to enable that value creation. Telcos will not share their data with the web scales. This is happening now. This has been going on. Telcos have massive data lakes on their subscribers. They have device um, data that the devices throw off location information, subscriber information, demographic information, um, a variety of different types of data that inherently comes with being a CSP. Um, this is a problem because that data, when you match that with the data lakes that the web scales have, that is the intersection point where this economic value is going to stem from. We think that the web scales are going to have to go around the telcos to fully and fully own that end user relationship to capitalize on this opportunity. Um, historically, the web scales have been an OTT play. Um, that is going to have to change because 5G brings new, uh, new considerations into the mix that were not there before location positioning, subscriber data and device data in the 5G world are going to be much more accurate. It's gonna be much more volume and types of data. And again, when you pair that with the existing web scale business model, which is entirely predicated on data, this will enable new high margin use cases for the web scales. So what we think is going to happen is that web, the web skills are going to circumvent telcos and start to own the network. And they are going to be the ones to realize the full potential of 5G. And we see trillions of dollars in economic value globally is ultimately going to be up for grabs here. So this is a massive opportunity. Why now and how is this going to happen? So, you know, we could say the web scales, you know, could circumvent the telco, um, but how would they actually do that? And, and how much would they have to spend to do something like this? Well, fortunately for them, there is a series of key market and technology trends that are culminating in the same time frame that give web scales a low cost asset light entry into network ownership making this circumvention of the telco in a, a, a very feasible proposition. So what are some of these 
trends. What has changed in the last few years? The democratization of spectrum is the biggest one. Unlicensed spectrum is going to be leveraged for 5G. 5G will run pervasively in unlicensed bands. There is a feature in 3GPP, NRU, which does exactly that. Um, there's also private bands, sharing mechanisms. Different countries have different opportunities there. The point I want to stress here is there is an opening up of spectrum to non-telco players. That opens a vector for web scale to, um, to leverage this opportunity. NFVSDN, disaggregation of software from hardware. You don't need proprietary network appliances anymore. All of these network functions will reside in the cloud. Cognitive architecture, cloud economics and operational benefits, bringing that into the network space. AI and machine learning enables the network to run autonomously and at low cost with minimal human support. This is on the OPEX side, will help web scales operate networks at a, in a very lean way at scale. Hardware commoditization. The web skills already do this in their central data centers where they use ODM boxes for their servers and storage equipment. Um, this will come into the network space. It already is. If you look at the TIP program, the OCP, um, there is the white boxification of network appliances, things like remote radio heads, optical equipment, routers, et cetera. 4G and 5G features. Um, Carrier aggregation, where you can tether bands together in real time. Massive MIMO is a, is a game changer for amount of capacity you can, you can um, create in a, in, in a cell uh, radius. NRU we talked about. There's also some others that are coming that are very interesting. Sidelink, um, URLLC, location positioning, and NR for satellites are just a few. There's others, but these are a few of them. If you look at satellites, all of the web scales have satellite initiatives. I find that very interesting. Um, they're going to be beaming down 5G signals from space for a variety of different purposes. Um, so th there is already examples of that. Project Clipper, Athena, um, uh, Loon, there's other ones as well. Distributed computing, where you have seamless autonomous resource orchestration between the central cloud and the edge cloud. And then the democratization of shared physical infrastructure. This is very important. Um, telcos over the last decade or so have been selling off the physical um, assets of their networks to third party players like tower companies. It is the, making it at a point where the web skills can go to um, these third party players, uh, could be data center reads as well, and they procure space in those locations to site. Um, virtual open virtual RAN, and they can do it. They can lean on third party resources as well to do the field work. The web scale only retains the software intelligence layer, and the physical layer can be carried out by partners. These things are, these models are now very much um, in play because it's feasible now and to do it nationwide um, in, in numerous countries. So the, the, we call it the rise of wholesale models. And the network is going to reside in the web scale cloud. So the network functions will be cloud native. They will operate in a distributed computing architecture. The web sales will own that physical infrastructure layer, and they will own the uh, key network functions that reside in that, such as the 5G core. We see this already. Microsoft bought affirmed. That's, I think, a canary in the coal mine. OK. Um, WebScales already own huge networks globally. And I want to talk through some of this. So let's go back some decades now. If we look at the early part of this century, 2000 to 2010, the WebScales have been uh, investing direct investments in dark fiber, uh, long haul transport, especially submarine cables, central data centers. In the 4G era, they expanded that. They started investing directly into Metro Optical, Direct Connect, EDNs, uh, regional and metro data centers, SD-WAN, 
and communications platforms. And in many cases here, they are the dominant player in these categories. For CDN, the web skills own the vast majority of CDN capacity globally now. Um, SD-WAN, Microsoft arguably operates the largest SD-WAN implementation in the world. Communications platforms, voice, video, and messaging, WhatsApp, WeChat, um, Viber, there's a whole suite of communications platforms that are far higher scale than anything the telcos have today. Those platforms will be integrated into the networks that these web skills are, uh, that we think are, they're going to be owning. When we get to the 5G era, things get interesting. Um, 5G core is going to be a key investment area. That is the intelligence layer of the network. Microsoft has already showed its hand. They are, uh, they bought 5G core assets. They're going to be developing that. They're going to own that. The RIC, when you go to an open VRAN architecture, the intelligent controller there, um, it, there, that is subject to significant innovation and automation. We believe the web skills will play a key role there. Um, if you look at the TIP uh, program, that is looking into that area. Um, again, that's, that's spearheaded by a Facebook-led uh, consortium. Um, and there's edge computing, nano, um, satellites, AI, ML. These are areas that we, we expect the web scales to be investing heavily in and, and uh, build dominant positions in, especially areas like edge computing. Um, this is already happening. So Rakuten, Rakuten already invests in, in these areas, uh, most of these areas, and they're building a network from scratch, a greenfield asset light network that is doing exactly what we're suggesting. What we're, what we're saying is that this is going to start to spread to other web skills as well. Um, so while telcos are focused on monetizing advancements in, in network technology, the web scales have been focusing on the business models. And that's what we're going to get into next is the business model and how that's going to change and move to free. Um, some web skills are starting with private networks. We see that now with Azure Edge Zones, Outposts, Anthos, um, starting in the private network space in the enterprise domain. We do expect they're going to jump into consumer at some point. Rakuten is going the opposite direction. They're starting in consumer. Now they're starting to come into enterprise. We expect them to be in both areas. And then, yes, Rakuten was the first web scale to, to do this. Okay, so let's talk about the business model. That's the, this is what this webinar is, is supposed to be about. So I kind of set the stage before. Network ownership, why, how, when. Now we're going to talk about what's the business model. How do they actually make money from this and why? Um, we think connectivity is going to be ubiquitous, intelligent, and free in the 5G era. Um, and it's going to be driven by the web skills. So if we go back in time, and we look at the evolution of, of uh, monetization models for connectivity, there's been quite a bit of disruption. Um, in, in the 2G era, we charged for voice minutes and text messages. The telcos dominated that era. In the 3G era, we had the transition to smartphones, where we started to charge for data per megabyte, per gigabyte. Voice and text prices plunged. Telcos still dominated the 3G era. 4G era, things started to change. Smartphones are now pervasive. Data went unlimited. Minutes and text went OTT, given away for free via, in many cases, the web scale platforms. And then we saw the rise of digital packages and ecosystems. Um, and we saw web scale start to take this opportunity from the telcos in areas such as voice, video, and mobile payments. The 5G era we expect to be uh, the biggest magnitude shift that we've seen yet in the telecom industry. It's going to be all types of devices, wearables, holdables, um, everything is implicated here. Data becomes unencumbered, where connectivity is effortless, it's seamless, it transcends everything, and it's unencumbered. You don't need to worry about typing in passwords and, and, and uh, shifting workloads from one device to another. Everything will become effortless, part of an ecosystem. We'll get there at some point. Um, 
we expect connectivity will be given away for free or close to free to consumers. Enterprises, it's a little different. Enterprises, we believe, will start paying for outcomes. They'll buy solutions or they'll access outcomes that are being provided by companies such as WebScales so that they can drive their businesses forward and also capitalize on opportunities uh, from these new technologies. Dominant players in this era is going to be the web scales and digital service providers, telcos that actually make that jump from traditional to next generation. Um, companies like Reliance Geo are on our list for being successful in this transition phase. There's a few other telcos that we see as being um, a little more proactive, and we're, we're hopeful that they're going to be able to make this transition as well. So. Um, the web scale disruption of the model, the telco model began um, last decade. Um, we're going to see that disruption fully realized this decade. Again, Rakuten is showing us what this looks like. And then by the end of this decade, we think that these new models will start to spread around the world. So let's talk about the actual model. I'm going to put numbers behind this. Um, and what uh, hypothetical situations here. So today, how do telcos monetize the consumer? They sell them network access. Um, usually it's either metered or unlimited. Um, it could be postpaid or prepaid, usually paid monthly. So they're selling data buckets. That's gonna change to selling ecosystems. The web scales ecosystem has numerous touch points to that uh, end user where each of those, end, each of those um, vectors are monetization opportunities. These are just some of the one, the areas that web skills are in today. This will obviously evolve and get broader over time. Um, everything from digital advertisements, cloud services, financial services, um, e-commerce, media and entertainment, data for enterprises, that other category, that's interesting where um, data sets can be, um, they, there can be brokerage models where data can be traversing in the digital uh, realm and value can be transferred from web scale to enterprise or between enterprises brokered by a web scale. Um, this is where I think we're going to see this start to go um, as data, as companies, um, as enterprises digitalize. They, they pursue this digital transformation. The new model is you give up the access to the user, the end user agrees to opt in, and in exchange for agreeing to give up their data, this is part of the terms and conditions, um, they get free unencumbered connectivity. This is the model used today. So when someone goes and uses a social media platform or a marketplace platform, to use that platform, that end user must agree to the T's and C's to use that platform, which requires they get the, the user gives up their data. So what we're saying is that that model is gonna come into the telecom connectivity space. And there's going to be opportunities by doing that to monetize that subscriber in different ways, indirectly in most cases. So let's put some numbers to this. Um, in the Traditional telco model for the consumer, monthly ARPU for a single line consumer with unlimited data in the U.S. market, so let's talk about the U.S. here, is around $50 per month. Now, if you do the ecosystem model and you give away the connectivity for free, there is a combination of areas where the web scale can monetize the end user. Um, these numbers here are based on current data. What we did is we looked at how much the web scales get from their ecosystems today, and we made some assumptions around if they have the network data and ownership of the network, how much more money can they make? How do they generate alpha from combining those two domains? And these numbers, honestly, I think are a little low. I think, I think it's going to be much greater than these numbers, um, but we want it to be conservative here. When we add those numbers up, you get around $50 per month 
in, in revenue capture from the ecosystem. So that's adding up all the different touch points in the ecosystem. Now, $50 ARPU is lower than what the telcos get, but if you consider the growth platform and the lower cost of the Greenfield network, um, the web scales can do this at a very high margin at scale. And this, this note just says um, these numbers are, are based off of um, data that we see in that the web skills report in, in 10Ks, et cetera. Um, how much money do they actually get from the different types of digital business models? Um, digital ads is, is the most um, uh, easiest to get data on. Some of these other ones we had to make some assumptions around. So for example, something like financial services, um, there would be fees um, that the web scale would get for something like, say, Apple Pay or Google Pay, um, where every time that feature is used um, in the confines of that ecosystem, the web scale would get a fee um, and they would own that end user relationship because they would own that full, the, the network, the cloud, the, the key applications, everything out to the end user. If they own that in the ecosystem, they have po a point position to, um, to capture that value that is generated inside of that ecosystem. So um, $50 is our, um, under the freemium model, we think is feasible now. Um, if such a model were to happen you know, this year, um, we're not saying that that's gonna happen this year. This, this takes time to, to happen, to play out. Um, but what I wanna convey here is that that $50 number for the state, we could see that at, at a minimum doubling this decade, at a very minimum. We could see that triple, quadruple, um, go up by a factor of five times. When data silos are broken down, when data is leveraged in new ways, when there is cross-pollination of data sets, there is tremendous value that, that comes from that. And we're going to see new monetization models in the in the ecosystem that the web skills will will take a disproportionate amount of that value. So that is that is critical. This justifies the investment and the headache of owning and operating a network, an asset like network at scale. Okay. So um, let's talk about examples where this is already happening and where this, where, where this is probably going. So Rakuten and Reliance Geo are already doing this. I wanna stress that this is already happening. Reliance Geo, when they launched, they gave away connectivity for free. Since then, they have started to charge, but I think we might see more innovation in the, in the pricing models as they start to digitalize India. Um, I think we might see some very interesting models come into play where people that can't afford connectivity, they might get free access in exchange for this ecosystem model. And then Rakuten has global ambitions, um, but they're starting in Japan. Um, they've had mixed success so far, but I do believe that they are going to be successful with, with what they're trying to do, and that is disrupt the status quo um, of the telecom industry into and to capture and enable and capture um, that value from data. We expect Alphabet, Amazon, and Microsoft to follow suit. There's a bunch of examples that this is going on. Um, here's some of them. There are many, many, many other examples. You can find some of them, more a, a broader list in our report. Um, these are examples where the web scale owns infrastructure for the purposes of delivering last mile access, or it includes um, intelligence platforms that they're gonna leverage in their clouds to provide this next generation network. So that's Microsoft acquiring a firm in MetaSwitch. It would be an example of that. Um, Facebook and Apple, they have potential, but their path is unclear. They don't have public cloud infrastructure. Um, they have internal clouds for their internal processes. Um, so Apple also has iCloud. Um, so they have some of the ingredients to potentially do something like this. Um, but unfortunately, they have some, some big gaps in how they would actually get into this space. And we expect there to be more of a partnership approach 
uh, versus um, more of a holistic approach that we see some of these other companies able to do. And then in China, the web skills there, um, due to unique considerations in that country, um, the web skills will have to coexist with the, the telcos. So there's going to be more of a participation rather than outright circumvention of the telco in China. So that's a unique market. But if we look outside of that market into emerging markets, if we look at the states, um, I think there is, there is great potential um, for, for this disruption to play out. Okay, so um, the telco response. So telcos see this disruption. This is, this is happening. I want to give you three examples that the telcos know this is happening. So um, in the past, over the last few years, we've seen some telcos um, be proactive here. They've experimented with different um, monetization models uh, for fixed access as well as for, um, for mobile access where there is subsidy models in place that leverage um, data. Um, in some cases, there is an ad subsidy or there is a web browsing subsidy, which is then used for ads. Um, and this, to me, is an example that the, some of the telcos see the disruption coming and they've been trying to get ahead of this and try and evolve their business models to uh, make sure that they're participating in the data, um, the data monetization opportunity. Okay, um, one of the questions that, that I get frequently when I give this talk is about the governments and are they going to let this happen? Um, so I, I did want to put a slide in about this. Um, we personally do not believe the governments are going to break up the web scales. There's some key reasons for this. Um, the web scales are going to bridge the digital divide. They're going to be the ones that do it. These satellite investments that a variety of web skills are undertaking, one of the key reasons they're doing this is to bring online um, the last few billion people in the world that do not have connectivity. Satellites are a, um, a economically feasible way to provide these wide area network coverage in the rural and remote areas of the world. There's new tax revenue here. So there are some loopholes that, that will ultimately need to get closed, but um, assuming there is um, some evolution there, um, as this new economic value is created, there is new source of tax revenue. Now, that is very attractive for the government. So I, I am really struggling to understand why they would break up um, companies that have the potential to bring vast amounts of tax revenue into, uh, into the government sector. Um, so that, that is definitely a consideration. Economic contribution, even beyond tax revenue. Web scales are hiring. Um, Amazon alone this year is going to hire well over 100,000 people. Um, that is that is a massive job creation. Other web skills are all hiring. Everyone is hiring in the web skills sector of the key web skills, those nine companies we showed on the prior slide. Um, that's important in this in this economic downturn situation, and they're the ones that are creating some of these high paying um, uh, jobs that are helping economies evolve and digitalize. There's R and D investment in, in things like quantum computers. Um, blockchain, um, all kinds of new technologies that are going to play a role, as well as distributed computing, 5G, and AI. Um, web scales are driving a lot of this innovation. Then there's the infrastructure development. We're talking about many, many billions of dollars that could potentially come into, um, into the sector to build out network infrastructure, IT infrastructure, edge compute sites. Um, huge lift to the economy. This is something governments are, are fixated on trying to do if they have a conduit that can scale this and fund a lot of this. Um, that is extremely uh, interesting to them. Um, and then last but not least, um, winning the technology and the digital transformation race. So countries are trying to stay assertive and they're trying to stay relevant. 
Um, they're trying to evolve their economies to digitally transform not only the, the, the economies, but also their societies. Um, and web skills will play a key role enabling and supporting this. So if you break up the web scales, you lose these things. You, they can't deliver on these, these promises. Um, and that will hurt governments more than it will help them um, by, by making big changes to, to the, the status quo here. So um, rather than break them up, we expect there to be checks and balances imposed. So closing tax loopholes, we expect um, regulation in marketplaces. Um, we expect um, things like that to be implemented that enable participants in those ecosystems to, um, to assert themselves, to have some protections, and, but also continue participating and, and generating value from being participants in those ecosystems. Okay. So um, the freemium model is coming to the, the network connectivity domain this decade. We gave you some tangible examples that this has already started. Um, web scales will, are going to need to decouple from reliance on telcos to serve their own needs. Remember, we showed that chart of each era and how much more the web scales took control of their own destiny, buying up more infrastructure, building it out themselves, owning, controlling that infrastructure. Um, optical transport grids, they have huge optical transport grids. Um, the cloud businesses that they have, um, now they're getting into mobile core and other areas. Um, so we see this, right? These are, these are tangible examples from history, and then we have uh, pointers to look at where this, this could be going in the future. So, um, this is basically to wrap up what we just talked about, and then my last slide is what the telcos can do about this. Um, and, th and then we'll open up for Q&A. So um, telcos are a cap on the ability for web fields to fully monetize their digital offering. So um, subscribers having limitations, encumbrances on data usage, that hurts the web skills. That doesn't help them. They want data to be fully democratized. They want it to be uh, – connectivity, rather. They want it to be fully democratized and as cheap as possible, if not free, so that they can fully monetize their ecosystems and make sure that people can consume as much data as they want, um, network data as they want, when they're residing in those ecosystems. Um, this is going to require web scales to fundamentally disrupt the status quo, and we see more uh, network ownership to fully capitalize on this opportunity. Uh, we talked about the technologies that are available um, that can create asset light networks that are much lower cost to own and operate compared to traditional networks, right? Rakuten is doing this. Their network is, is much cheaper on a CapEx and OpEx basis than a traditional network architecture, as, a, as an example. Um, so this model is scalable and it will help the web skills to close the digital divide. That opens up over 3 billion more people that can be monetized in the ecosystems that they have. <clears throat> um, that data is lucrative. This is all about data. This is not about just giving away access for the sake of giving away access. There is an exchange as part of that, and the exchange is that data can be um, liberated, that it can be collected, synthesized, analyzed, leveraged in new ways to create value. Um, Rakuten and Reliance Geo are, are already doing this to an extent. Um, we expect Amazon Alphabet and Microsoft to follow suit, potentially others. Um, okay, so what should the telcos do? Um, it's actually not all dire for them. Um, we do see some positive movement by certain telcos um, that gives us cause for hope. Um, what we are suggesting to telcos is in order to play on the web skills level, they need to adopt a completely new mindset and way of working. So that requires adoption of the architecture, the same architecture that the web skills are, are using for their greenfield builds. Um, they need to become asset light in OTT. The crossing from traditional network architecture to 5G, this is actually a good time to do it 
because 5G SA is that jump point. The telcos have a decision to make. Do they continue along with the traditional architecture and layer 5G on top, or do they break from the traditional and do they go all in on a completely standalone next generation Greenfield 5G architecture? That is a key question mark. Some telcos are opting to do that. Other things that we're recommending is that telcos need to separate into opco and netco models to transform into an OTT like network operator. So opco and netco means the telco basically needs to become a virtual network operator. That's an OTT player running over shared infrastructure pipes. So that wholesale model applying that into um, the network, how, how the, the telcos that evolve will be able to use physical infrastructure for their purposes. Um, and they need to become software centric, cloud native, virtual, fully virtualized, automate everything, um, and align with vendors that can provide them with these platforms, the arms dealers that can provide them with solutions, um, platforms, et cetera, that can enable them to be successful here. They need to change their way of working. They need to fully adopt CICD and DevSecOps. There's other things as well, but these are, these are two of the important ones, more important ones. Um, this is, this, the web skills already do this. This is deeply embedded in their DNA. What we're suggesting is that telcos need to become web scales to compete against the web scales. That requires them to change not only their operational model, but also how they of how they work within that operational model. And then last but not least, telcos need to build their own ecosystems to, to compete on web scales level. So we've listed some companies here that are, um, that are facing disruption themselves from the web scales that need help to assert themselves in this new world. Um, so we all know about Amazon and Walmart and their um, you know, their competitive situations against each other. Walmart has some big gaps in their digital transformation. They need a network partner to help them to do some of these things. Um, Disney, Disney has great content, um, but they don't have some of the key platforms that web skills have in the entertainment and media space that would help Disney capture some of the value. They might need to partner with a web uh, uh, telco to help them. Um, in gaming, Activision Blizzard, um, they need help. FedEx, UPS, booking, uh, the, the payment companies, Netflix and Spotify, even, even some other subscale, um, uh, smaller tier web scales that are more specialists in their respective domains, like a Netflix or a Spotify, they need help to build ecosystems and build this value and assert themselves in this market. Telcos have a role to play if they're willing to disrupt themselves and build this type of digital infrastructure. Um, there can be ecosystems built jointly and revenue sharing models across partners that can make very interesting and lucrative opportunities arise um, that, that the telcos and these other players can participate in. Okay, so with that, um, we're gonna open it up for Q&A. And I'm gonna go right down the list here. So just bear with me a second. Um, okay, the first question um, is, can you show slide nine again? So let me go back. So someone wanted to see slide nine again, so I'm gonna bring that back up. Okay, so there's slide nine. I'm gonna to go to the next question. Um, the question is, what about Reliance Geo? Aren't they a pseudo web skill like Rakuten? Yes, we do view them as that. They're coming at this from a traditional telco standpoint though, but they are moving very quickly, evolving, uh, disrupting their own business model and moving into this this type of um, uh, of a structure. So yes, we do view them as a, a pseudo web skill, as you put it. Um, the next question is, what is your view on how successful Facebook Tip has been? 
seems to have lots of demos and pox, but relatively few commercial products coming out of that. I agree um, thus far, but this decade, we're going to see commercialization and scale of innovation that's taking place within PIP, within OCP. Um, some of these things will be game changers in their respective domains. The next question is, um, the next question is, if web scales give connectivity for free or close to free, how does that allow them to grow? Wouldn't they need revenue from connectivity to grow their revenues? They don't need the, the revenue from connectivity because they're going to monetize the end user in different ways. So I'm going to come back to that slide and I want to show that again. So this, these are the ways they monetize them in uh, advertisements, leveraging the data of the end user. Cloud services could be things like stores, like iCloud, um, but there's other examples as well. Financial services, mobile payments, uh, charging fees, um, getting a percentage of, of total um, spend value. Um, there's different mechanisms that could be there where the web scale would get money from having that full ownership of the end user and having that that end user participating in their digital ecosystem. And then there's other examples here as well. That's how they monetize the sub. The next question is, um, the web scale digital ecosystem looks very similar to what Facebook is doing today, free access in return for data privacy. You don't expect regulatory challenges to that. So, so they've been doing this for over a decade. Um, there will be checks and balances imposed. We do not believe that the business model will fundamentally be um, dismantled. For the reasons we specified before, it's not in government's best interest for them to unbundle the web skills. With respect to the web skills already doing this, you're absolutely right. The difference is that when you act, when you leverage new types of data and you blend that with the existing models that the web scales have, you create entirely new and more lucrative opportunities to monetize and uh, to, to monetize the ecosystem. So location data, device information, spatial awareness. Um, there's other examples as well. Once you start to layer that into the digital um, models that the web skills already have for data capture and synthesis and leveraging that, um, that creates new, net new opportunities to monetize. So for example, digital ads. What would happen if you had a full 360 degree view of your end user and you knew at any given point where that end user was in the network, where that device was that, that's being utilized. Um, that enables um, a company that has that model to charge even more money for the advertisements because they can also look at, did that lead to a conversion? Um, they, can, they can tie that back into more intelligence for the enterprises that are buying ads they can charge more and they can, they can generate that alpha out of blending the network intelligence with the digital business intelligence that they have today. Okay, um, next question is about CBRS and limited uh, movement by the web scale. Um, okay, so this is, a, this is a good question. Let's talk about spectrum. Um, there, is a, there are three tranches to CBRS. Um, the, the bottom tranche is, is GAA, the GAA tranche, general access availability. That is the tranche the web skills are going to use. They don't need to pay for the spectrum. They can use the unlicensed, um, unencumbered portion of the spectrum, and they can carry or aggregate that with other spectrum bands to provide um, the connectivity. So it's a combination of different features that are residing in 3GPP standards, Leveraging that with unlicensed spectrum bands um, to, to enable um, some of these outcomes that we're talking about with, in, in terms of network ownership and how that actually gets operated. The next question is, do you see this model working across 5G and fixed lines? I personally believe that this is going to be a mobile world. Fixed access, I think, um, has uh, a niche. I, I believe that 5G is a game changer and that fixed wireless is going to replace, um, is going to be much more heavily em emphasized versus fixed access in, in this world because uh, 5G is essentially wireless fiber. And the economic 
uh, model associated with doing this wirelessly versus um, with fixed lines where you have to do um, last mile uh, build of the fiber lines. Um, it's very different. It's much more lucrative and scalable to do this wirelessly. And with 5G, it makes sense to do this. You can get high bandwidth. I'm actually, um, fi fixed wireless has, has tremendous uh, potential for replacing fixed access. The next question is, um, the next question is, free connectivity applies mostly to consumers. Will enterprises be willing to buy this in return for access to data? So enterprises is different. Um, in most cases, no. I, I don't think it's gonna be the same model. What enterprises really want is outcomes. They want outcomes. And the data can be leveraged. So the consumer data can be leveraged to give enterprises outcomes. Um, there are different areas within that, 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 that could be created to provide that value to the enterprises. But um, I, I, I think that uh, it's, it's gonna be very different, the model for consumer versus the model for enterprise um, and how that actually plays out. Most of what we've talked about today is the consumer aspect, right? The private network aspect, that's a, that's a separate discussion and how we see those structures coming into place. Um, but they also are tied together because consumer data is leveraged for enterprise data. So for example, for digital ads, Facebook on, um, on their social media platform, they collect insights from their users. And then they turn around and they sell that to the enterprises for a higher uh, rates for advertisements. So that model is already very well mature today. What we're saying is if you add the network intelligence to that, and the web scale owns that environment, they can generate even greater value from the combination of those two domains. Okay, the next question. I'm gonna, there's, a, there's like 20 more questions in the queue, so I'm gonna get to as many as I can. Um, feel free to follow up with me after if I don't get to your question. Um, the next question is, what are the implications of free connectivity on telecom vendors? Um, so, well, we talked about white boxification. We talked about disaggregation. Um, let me go to that slide again, slide, slide nine. Uh, if you look at these technologies, these things to me, um, I see a lot of disruption to the traditional telecom vendors. I also see some opportunities in here. It really depends on where they play and how much they're willing to disrupt themselves and invest in new areas such as, as um, intelligence um, areas, AI, ML, um, automation platforms, analytics platforms, 5G core, uh, cloud native. These are areas that are gonna be critical for enabling, um, enabling ecosystems, as well as the telcos, right? So we talked before, some telcos are gonna make this transition. They're gonna evolve. Um, they're they're gonna need vendors to help them do that, right? So, um, there, there is an opportunity there for those vendors, but there's also quite a bit of disruption. The, the real question is, what's the net of it? Is it net greater, bigger pie, or is it net smaller pie? I think we need to wait a little longer to see how that plays out. It could go either way. The next question is, um, so more questions about uh, vendor opportunity. I covered that. Um, so comments on FCC related regulatory issues around how much of connectivity can be monetized via mining the data. Seems there's more regulation on this from FCC on telcos and on web scales. So yeah, so the regulatory environment needs to evolve as well. Um, it's still, uh, I mean, we're still using legislation that was from many decades ago, um, applying that in the telecom space. There has been some evolution, which is great, but um, there needs to be a level playing field between telcos and web scales in terms of being able to go after opportunities in the market and being unencumbered from some of the legacy structures that remain in place. The next question is, I noticed you did not cover Google Fi. They have started on this journey with shared infrastructure and bundled services. Yes, they have. Um, Fi, um, I should have listed them in the example section. Um, that has a huge potential to scale. And leveraging, you know, Wi-Fi first models, 
um, having that direct ownership to the to the end user. Um, I think that's an example of more evidence that this what we're talking about today is feasible and could be probable. Um, there is ingredients, components, if you will, in place already that could bring web skills into this type of a of a level in network ownership. The next question is, can you speak more to the specific help smaller scale web skills like Netflix need from telcos at this point? So um, this is really going to be contingent on the new models that come out of this. So today, Netflix is a one trick pony, right? They sell a subscription package for, vid uh, for video content. Netflix is looking at their business model and they're trying to look at how do they start to branch out how do they start to monetize new types of business models, most likely going to remain in the entertainment and, and media domain. But there might be needs that arise from that as they start to evolve themselves, where the telcos can actually help them. They can help them be successful, scale into opportunities and mount a greater um, uh, competitive uh, positioning against these, these larger web scale companies. Um, next question, someone wants to see slide 15 again, so I'm going to jump to that. All right, so we're jumping to slide 15. Um, okay, so there's slide 15. I'm going to jump to the next question. Um, okay, question is, what is the definition of a web scale? So a web scale is a digital native platform company that operates ICT environments at hyperscale. That is our definition um, for what a web scale is. And there's really nine companies that are at a level of scale that we include them in our, uh, in our consideration. And that is, um, they're listed on this slide actually, Amazon Alphabet, Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, um, the Bats in China, and Rakuten. The next question is, um, what is the role of web scales entering fixed home 5G internet? So I think, um, you know, we have on this slide, you know, Google owns WebPath. Uh, I think that's a good example of fixed wireless access, leveraging 5G. There, we could see them reassert those, um, those units that they have to play a much bigger role in fixed, um, in the, the fixed wireless access domain. Okay, the next question is, um, some of these questions are duplicates, so I'm gonna skip them. Um, okay. So uh, this question is about privacy, security, and ethical considerations. Um, so again, this, what the, the data models we're talking about here are already widely used today, uh, all over the world. This is why we use the web scale's entire business model is predicated on doing exactly what we're talking about here, which is monetizing digital businesses and data is the lifeblood of those businesses. Everybody except Apple. Apple is a hardware centric company, but they're looking to evolve as well, right? Into a services centric company. So even Apple is, is looking at moving into that uh, in a greater way into that space. Um, so we talk about privacy, security, ethical considerations. Again, I think there's going to be checks and balances. If governments are serious about uh, digitalizing, they're going to have to get progressive with how data uh, and, and the data economy is managed, right, and regulated. They need to start getting more. Um, uh, they, need, they need to get on that in a much bigger way. So uh, otherwise, they're going to be not competitive with other countries that do. Uh, be much more progressive here. The next question is, um, next question is on time frames and when will these things happen? Um, so these things are all, have already started. We talked about Rakuten and RGO. I would argue that recent moves that some of these other web skills have made um, points to that is coming. Uh, Project Quipper, for example, um, it's going to take a few years to get all those satellites into space. They are actively working on that now. They're hiring hundreds and hundreds of people to do this. Um, they're serious about that, that uh, initiative. Um, but there's a lead time. You got to get the people together. They got to innovate. They need to get, you know, they need to get infrastructure in the field. 
They got to operationalize things. They need to build software platforms. Um, th this is going to take some time, but this is going to happen this decade. This decade, this is th this is going to happen. By the end of this decade, we expect that um, we're going to see web skills owning much greater portions of networks than they do today. The next question is um, some more questions about regulations. One more thing about regulations, and I actually want to go back to that slide. I can stay on a couple more minutes for anybody that wants to stick around. Um, let's come back to the, the government stuff here. Um, governments want the digital divide bridged. The telcos are not getting it done. Let's be honest here. There's three over 3 billion people in this world that still do not have uh, connectivity. If the web sales say, look, we're going to need to implement a business model like this, but you know we'll pay for everything. We'll pay for the infrastructure. We'll get everybody into the onto the internet. We'll have low cost devices. Um, you know we'll help your economy digitalize. We'll create innovation. The governments are going to be in a tough spot. They're going to have to figure out how do we allow this to happen in a way where they can still encourage competition and make sure that. Um, you know th that they're addressing privacy and these other concerns. That's where I think we're the the, the position that they're going to be find themselves in um, as this this continues to move forward. Um, so the next question is, how do you see web skills building out their 5G networks? Um, are they going to build and develop it, or are they going to buy it? So um, we didn't have enough time for this webinar to talk about the vectors to actually get network ownership. That's a separate. Webinar. Actually, I'm, I'm actually thinking about doing a webinar on that another time. Um, but the, the gist is that we expect, given the new technologies and the market changes, um, they're going to build greenfield wherever possible. It's going to be greenfield, greenfield, greenfield. And they will only buy if they need to. That's, that is the expectation that we have. All right. So, um, actually, I think that's. That was the last question. So um, thank you everybody for joining today. Um, again, if you want to follow up with me, I'll give you my email address here. And if you want to get in touch, um, feel free to do so. So I hope you enjoyed the webinar today. Uh, thanks. Take care. Have a good day.